So we've ranked all these we've episodes forever, from, from West, yeah. and we probably will talk about these episodes as we go through them. Um, there are eight episodes in this season. We've got Space yeah. Babies, The Devil's Chord, Boom, 73 Yards, Dot and Bobble, Rogue, Legend of Ruby Sunday, and Empire of Death. And we have ranked them both from worst to best. Um, yeah. We'll do our usual, I reckon. We go through, and once we've said the same one. episode twice, we'll talk about it. Yeah. So, sure. what is your number eight? My number eight is Space Babies. It's mine as well. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So, Space Babies, for me, I think he's an absolute fine Doctor Who episode and a solid season yeah, opener. Yeah, I agree. The Doctor Who season openers have to be like this. Like, as I said, I said this mm-hmm. in my review, you don't watch Partners in Crime for the Adipose subplot. You watch it for... Catherine Tate and David Tennant, right? You don't watch Space Babies for the talking Space Babies. You watch it for as an introduction for Shooty and Millie as into these characters. Uh, characters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's and I agree hundred. The the main thing I took well, watching that episode, I was like, it wasn't a great episode. However, Millie and Shooty's uh, dynamic is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Like it's a great way to first show their proper dynamic. It's phenomenal and. It's like I don't hate the episode, like it's that kind of thing. None of these episodes I actually dislike. Mm-hmm. I like all of these episodes, but it just happens to be that it's it's a great like, and I think it's a good. It's not the best like opener we've had of an of a new series or a new Doctor kind of, but I think it's still very good. And I think establishing that dynamic and giving them an episode to breathe and have be able to just show off that dynamic works yeah. so well. Throwing them straight into Devil's Chord or into a yeah, throwing them straight into something like Devil's Chord or Boom would just not make any sense. No, you have to have it this is a nice, first, yeah. and I think it's sort of it's just the talking baby stuff. I think gets on my tip. <laughs> That's what winds me up because it's so. And I hate, I hate to say it, I love Doctor Who, but that is proper cringeworthy for me. I really, struggle. <laughs> I did, I did struggle with that, and I've rewatched it. It is good. The stuff with the bogey mines. The mm-hmm. final scene with Shooty wanting to save the bogey mines. Brilliant. Um, I just like that's the only thing that I'm, I'm really like at all a fan of about that i thought the baby stuff was just a bit too silly for me yeah i fully get that yeah 100 percent. yeah what is your number, number seven? seven my number seven i would like to say other than space babies i did like every episode in this series. i agree with that. i yeah, didn't have a single I, dot yeah. so i i will say to somewhat somewhat regrettably uh dot and bubble mine's also dot and bubble ah interesting go on talk about dot and bubble do you want me to go for it so first of all i can't remember her name Whoever the girl is in the episode, absolute snake, absolute bitch. Like honestly, just do one lightly. <laughs> the snake. character, by the way, not the, the character, actress, not the actress. The character, I'm sure, is great. Which is the whole point of the character. Yeah, yeah. So again, yeah. for for me, I I, I Jenny, I did not think I was going to enjoy this episode. I'll be 100 percent honest. I wasn't for me. Sure, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the story, and we will get to this when I get to. Well, we will get to this when I get 73 yards. Mm. Is that middle block of the season, what I felt was a very strange part, and I fully understand that scheduling clashes, shoot, you couldn't be in as much. Yeah. If I... if Dot and Bubble was in second season, it would be a lot higher on my list because the final speech, mm. it was very good. It was beautifully performed, and I I think going back now and rewatching it, it would hit more. Mm-hmm. At the time, it there's there wasn't enough time to fully for me there wasn't enough time to fully invest myself into shooty like i didn't have that connection that i agree I, with you the thing the difficult for, for that speech to this hit is the difficulty, and that was the whole point of it this is the difficulty with having an eight episode series as well it does yeah. leave less time and then you've also got two episodes where he is it's dr light really so you've got mm-hmm. six episodes with shooty really seven if you include the christmas special before so you get a bit of time but not too much and then you get two episodes back to back that are um like that are Doctor Light, and then it's it, it makes it quite difficult to sort of yeah I I don't know it's a difficult one but for me Dot and Bubble was the one where that yeah that final scene absolutely saves the episode it's absolutely incredible yeah. it's such an emotional performance and it's such a gut wrenching scene that just completely took me off guard as to how brilliant and deep that would be but what I would say is that because and I've said this again in my review I'm sort of treading a lot of ground that points I've already made but. With Lindy, um, I think she's such a detestable character and she's designed in such a way, but we have to follow her for most of the episodes. So when you rewatch it, I can't give it much value because I actually hate her as a character. <laughs> Not only is she like a horrendous person, 
right? But she's also really, really annoying. And that, again, is by design. But it makes yeah. it really hard to it's good writing because other, of the whole point. Other yeah. Doctor Light episodes are around the companion or a likeable character, like Sally Sparrow and Blink, for example, who you root for. I can't at all root for Lindy, and I know that's the point, but it, beyond the first viewing, it's hard to rewatch and get through because you are having to watch pretty much almost mm-hmm. 40 minutes of screen time where she's basically the only character doing stuff, and she is insufferable. By design, yes, but... It makes it hard to rewatch, and uh, because of that, I'm I'm not really a fan. But I do love I love what the episode was doing, and I I thought it was very clever in how yeah. it did it, and it was a lot more nuanced than I thought it would be. Um, and I was in fact I was very impressed. But that I just it, it's hard to rewatch, and I think because of that, it has to go lower on my list. Yeah, that's kind of yeah, and I think it's a, it struggles with it with its position. I think I think given a sec, given it being the second season, I think you could have potentially gotten away with it. With how light of the Doctor Who episode it was, but again, yeah. we'll get to it when I get seventy three yards. Yeah, what's your sixth place? My number six is seventy three yards. <laughs> so is mine. Oh my god, we haven't. Is it? Oh my god, identical list here. Um, mm-hmm. Seventy three yards is an interesting one. It's a great for me. It is entirely let down by the pacing. The episode concept is flawless and brilliant, and I love the mystery of it. I love, yeah. I love all the elements of it. I think it's genuinely, properly, properly I think good. It's beautiful. I just think so they needed more time. I think they they mm-hmm. needed way more time to explore it. I don't think it should have been a two-parter, but I think it should have been a 50-minute or an hour-long episode. They took too much time to get where they needed to be, and they wanted to emphasize yeah. this political plot, and I think this political subplot was um, just weak. Just weak, very surface level. I mean, it was like Roger App Williams' entire motivation was, oh, he was just, he's going to fire nukes. And after seeing years and years, after seeing all the other stuff that Russell's written around politics and his you know, political satire, I was expecting a lot, something a lot more nuanced and a lot deeper than just that. And I think it wrapped up very quickly, and I just think a lot of those things could have been solved by having a bit of a longer runtime. Now, I do like a mystery. I do like an ambiguous ending. I'm not going to complain about not having all the answers because I actually love that. You know, I'm a fan of films like The Shining and like The Lighthouse. They don't make any sense, really, but you enjoy it and you're sort of along for the ride and it leaves you with questions and those questions linger on your mind. But that's not the problem with 73 Yards. For me, it's the pacing and not being able to really develop the stuff that really mattered, like the political subplot, for example. Yeah, it almost feels like... It's strange. They spent a, I thought like they spent a lot of time with Ruby, younger Ruby, mm. like, like in, still in Wales, and then... As she started to get older, they started, started the episode started to get quicker and quicker and quicker, and it almost like you're saying it could have taken a long, a lot it more time. Took, yeah. I think the episode could have been an hour and a half, like, and, and it would have been, but it was almost like the concept was like something for like a feature film. Like it's mm. a great concept, you just can't squeeze it all into that forty minutes. And 100%. the ending especially was like, the ending was just yeah, the ending was so quick that it was like, the moment you realised that it was Ruby who was seeing herself, mm-hmm. you were back in front of the TARDIS. Don't step on this episode ends at that kind of thing. Yeah, and there's still yeah, I know it is straight away, and it's clever, and I'm glad that it had ramifications for Empire of Death, and I think that that probably in in, in on rewatch will elevate everything. I need to rewatch the mm-hmm. whole season basically in order and sort of see how I feel about it. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, what is your? I, number... I will definitely rewatch the season. Yeah, hundred percent. What's so, your number five? We've been gassing this episode up all all episode. Uh, my number five is Empire of Death. Interesting. See, mine is yeah. Legend of Ruby Sunday. My next, <clears throat> it's the 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 top. The next like four of my list are incredibly close. Like I think potentially most of these on are rewatch, I think it could be it could change around. This is just off like mm-hmm. my my memory essentially. So um, what's your number four then? My number four is Boom. Oh, my see, mine is Empire of Death. So we can talk about that one. Oh, so we're talking Empire of Death. We've talked yeah. a lot about Empire of Death. I don't think yeah. it's the best finale. I think it's my favourite finale in a while. Mm-hmm. Probably my favourite since The Doctor Falls. Um, mm-hmm. And that's not, you know, it's not me just p- picking on the Chibnall era again. It's very much as a case of, I don't think the Battle of Ranskor of Colossus is that good. And the Timeless Children has, was good, mm-hmm. but it had a lot of other stuff going on that I just wasn't keen on. And The Vanquishers, I, I notoriously did not enjoy when I first watched that. Whereas with this, I felt like it had a lot of emotional weight and I think it really... I don't know. I think it really deserved that. Yeah, like I love this episode. I just 
love the episodes above it more. <laughs> like mm. that's I can't fault like I can't sit here yeah. and and nitpick and fault it. And no. after we just after just gassed it up for the last. And I think it's, I love I the think, ending. I think it's set up for the future amazingly. I just love the episodes above it more. I think like, yeah. Rather... For me, for me, Space Babies, Dot and Bubble, Seventy Three Yards, Legend of Ruby Sunday, my back end four are the ones that mm-hmm. I have things that I don't like about yeah. it that are more clear. And the top four. You know, um, the Devil's Chord, Rogue, Boom, Empire of Death. All of those ones are ones that I, I have good things to say about, and I and I do enjoy mm. more. But still have like little things beneath. It. But for Empire of Death, it's very much that thing. It's like it has things that I don't like. It has things that I probably don't want. I think for the most part, it's got that emotional weight, and it's focusing on the series arcs. I think it does that really well. I think it does Ruby's character really well. It does a lot with the companion and the Doctor, and I really like that. Yeah. Yeah, and what's, exactly. So what's your number three? My number three is Devil's Chord. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, my number three is Boom. Oh, so we can talk so about that now. Boom is my number four, yeah. So Boom, Boom was incredible. Was Boom was really phenomenal. good. I love the... Boom was so good. The only thing I, I would say I, I didn't like about Boom, I think, and it is my number three, but the only thing I'd say I didn't like about Boom is just that the, the nature of the episode, I like more stuff going on. I don't like it just sat in one location. But given that it was that, I think it was incredible. And I think it was really refreshing to see some, uh, to see a Moffat script again, considering we haven't had any of that in a long, long time. And I think, yeah, as I said again, I've said this, I keep saying I've said this in my review, but I just, I just, I'm kind of rehashing mm. stuff that I've already said. But Moffat has a tendency to have quite pretentious dialogue sometimes. And when it was every episode, in his era it was like okay right yeah mm-hmm. but with this it's nice because it's such a change of pace and it felt a lot more it was saying a lot more it was saying a lot about the anglican yeah. marines it was saying a lot about the nature of war and the stakes were high the doctor felt mortal and i think that was what was interesting about it. I, yeah I, that's what the dialogue was beautiful before, yeah. the music was beautiful yeah. the visuals were great Even all of it being in one place i loved as well mm-hmm. all of it being just in one location having everyone there playing it all out in this one place it almost could be like massive... a, it could be like a stage show doctor who couldn't yeah it? it is exactly what it yeah it's it was great having the whole thing with the ambulances and the susan twist stuff it's yeah uh yeah i'd yeah i love that episode it was so good it's very very yeah. good um second place my second place is Legend of Ruby Sunday. Oh, okay we can talk <laughs> about that then my second place is the devil's court so we can talk about oh, we talk about Ruby that Sunday as well that's my number three first. yeah um yeah so Legend, Legend of Ruby, Ruby Sunday, Sunday, I would rewatch for the last five minutes alone. I have I've rewatched it two or three times. I've watched the final ten minutes about ten times. Yes, I've watched the final ten minutes. So so <laughs> many times this week. It's um, so good. For me, it's a the, lot of setup is the problem. So that's the only thing that lets it down for yeah. me, and that's why it's so low on my list. Is it's a lot of setup, and I think it's brilliant setup and it's very well mm-hmm. handled. I like the pacing of it. I like. It's just, uh, there's a lot going on and it's a lot of setup and I don't think, the payoff is, is uh, the payoff is good in Empire of Death, but I need to sort of watch them back to back again and kind of have a think about it. But for me, Legend of Ruby Sunday is a lot of setup, but I do love a cliffhanger ending. I'm a massive fan of World Enough yeah. in Time and a lot of that has to do with how it ends because what a spectacular end with the Master Reveal and the Mondasian Cybermen. With this, it's the same sort of thing, like the reveal of Sutek and the Harbingers and the, the misdirection of Susan and the whole mystery of Ruby's mother all really interesting stuff i just i love the opening i love them going back to unit i love the flying in i love having mel back i honestly i have absolutely loved mel like mel's, mel's been great so good mel's been great been in it i love being back in unit i always love being back with unit having the stuff with susan and triad and i think i think the mystery building up to this as well plays a little bit as well like mm. seeing so much of this s triad thing and ev- everyone being like it's todd's anagram it's a todd's anagram yeah and then the episode it's like shows showing all the different things and then it just i just i just love love the pacing of it. i love the emotion thinking that it's uh susan and kind of building himself up to go and see her yeah the meme that that i've seen is do you dream of ambulances and shit that's so yeah. funny to me it's good that and got then, a big laugh in the screening yesterday as well the, the, the final 10 minutes so good the 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 speech that is made by harry uh, by the harbinger it's is so good. absolutely it's so good. phenomenal it's like I just, I love it. I love, it. I love a good monologue, and that's what it came across as. It was a, it was a great mythological fantasy monologue. A amazing, like proper royal esque. Like when you watch like stuff like Game of Thrones, it's like 
a king walks into this place and it's like it's that it's that energy you that they feel bring it. it you feel lists it lists all their titles it lists everybody who they work with it establishes people it's, who you the, who the audience will recognize either from this series or others who are all powerful yeah. massive beings look how the doctor reacted when he saw the toy maker when he saw maestro yeah. and you can establish that and go this is even bigger than that and that is just yeah. excellent and the yeah, it, it, the dialogue really, really elevated it, but the music was incredible, the visuals were great. The mystery behind it, the TARDIS groaning, oh my god. Yeah. That is haunting when they, when they have work it be, out. Have it be like linking back to Will, uh, Well Beyond when the TARDIS makes the noise for the first time. Yeah, really, really so good, good I'm very excited. So good. Um, it's so, yeah, when I was watching that, I just I just love it. I love that whole final 10 minutes. I love a good Doctor Who cliffhanger, and I was just obsessed mm-hmm. with that for the last week. And obviously now we know where it goes, and it's good and i don't know if it's and obviously empire of death is above it in my ranking link tree because as you know sunday is mostly set up and now we know where it goes off yeah. it's like it makes the setup less exciting but it is still good it's still a good episode it's still well structured the dialogue is great the characters are great the pacing i think is really good as well i could just easily watch that mm-hmm. episode um i'd never watch one without the other though i'd all if i'm have going to watch, to watch one of them now. i'm going to watch both yeah it, they're just but yeah, it's the same together they're like parters. yeah yeah yeah, together it's just like yeah, it's so good. And then Devil's, Devil's Court, Court as well yeah. is Devil's Court is phenomenal. Maestro is such a good villain, so good. He's yeah, I love Jinx Monsoon as Maestro. We're not going to talk too much about it because I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the time as well. Um, but time, yeah. Maestro is 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 great. I really thoroughly love that. I think the only thing I didn't like about Devil's Court was the the twist at the end song. But even that's warming up to me. I loved all of the elements. I loved the, the way it was shot, the way it was performed, the scene with the silence when the the Doctor sort of does the sonic screwdriver. And the scene, you know, it all goes quiet. I jaw to the floor. I loved it. it it's sort of the toy maker, but messing with music. And I just, I just loved all of those elements. It was such an exciting episode, and I, I just loved watching that, especially with it being part of the series premiere. I thought we were seeing a really great high concept. Yeah episode straight off the bat which i just loved so yeah it was it was really well placed as well i think it was a perfect episode too so nice yeah. having that like that link to the toy maker yeah within so early in the season it's so nice no 100 percent, absolutely it, it was something yeah. that i just thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed and just got such a kick out of that's why it's sort of second for me where did you put yours mm-hmm. again third it's third for me so. okay yeah so i mean yeah, yeah. It, it's not like yeah, uh, the Devil's Court for me. It, it's the setting and the music and the dynamic of it. You know, it was Shooty's big sort of performance. It was obviously because they aired this alongside Space Babies as well, which I'm kind of glad they did in hindsight. Obviously, it made the series feel even shorter, but it was really nice to to have that. And I, I yeah, I thoroughly yeah. enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, but yeah, number one, number for one, both of us, Rogue, Rogue. It's such a good episode. Now, Which we I just spoke about. It was such a good episode. Yeah. I look, Jonathan Groff in this was great. The, I said the... this to you as well. Rogue isn't of all time for me. Really? I genuinely think it's a top five. I don't think it's an of all time for me, but I, I loved it. And the, the reason I loved it, I think, and I've said... Guess what, Cooper? I've said this in my reviews as well. Um, <laughs> but but there's a lot of this series has been very unconventional. Like, Space Babies is probably mm-hmm. the most conventional Doctor Who episode. Devil's Chord maybe as well, Right. But then you had 73 Yards, Boom, and Dot and Bubble back-to-back. All three not so much, very not very conventional mm-hmm. episodes. Boom, all in one location. Very kind of um, big performance focus. Uh, Dot and Bubble, 73 Yards, both Doctor Light. And then we come back to Rogue. And Rogue, for me, felt like how I felt watching Doctor Who when I was younger. He's running around yeah. daft monsters that you sort of, you take seriously enough, but they are silly and a bit daft. Yeah. The running, the the music, the, the, the you know the the grandiose sort of speeches. Everything about this episode for me was Doctor Who at its core, and I think that is what I kind of love so much about it. And I think because we've had so many unique and different episodes this season, it really it really resonated with me. It really landed with me. Yeah, I I wholeheartedly agree. I think it's yeah. so. I don't know. It just it was just like feel good Doctor Who like it just gave you that like warm feeling inside. Like, I to, yeah, yeah, I was in such a giddy mood watching it. I was so just excited yeah. about it. It was one of those that I just yeah I loved. It, it. was generally because I wasn't expecting. It, I genuinely wasn't expecting it to be. No, I I, I my expe- expectations weren't great going into it with because we've seen the creatures and what they were going to be. But I was absolutely and it probably plays a massive part in it as well. I was absolutely blown away by it mm. and 
Yeah, and we've already spoke about Rogue. The Rogue needs needs to come back. He needs he, to. He be will. He will. He will. They he can't, is so I think they're probably, good. They're probably testing the waters a little bit and having his characters yeah. sort of show up there. But we'll see. Maybe not in season two, but maybe season three or four. Now that we know the yeah, character yeah. is 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 wanted yeah. back, um, that would be very nice to see. So we'll have to. Yeah, we'll have to wait and find that out. I think. But yeah. I'm 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 super excited by it. I think it was a lot of fun, and I just yeah, I can't wait to see that character again because i'm sure we will but i just think everything about this was so i don't want to say it's so bridgerton it's so doctor who at its core it was like a perfect collaboration wasn't it it was like yeah it it pleases the bridgerton fans with ruby sunday and pleases the doctor who fans exactly. with all the shit and rogue stuff. exactly i just thought it was brilliant like the doctor singing pure imagination as he entered the tardis was just so good what, how has that so never happened good. before what a, what I know. a great idea good. yeah i know i i i honestly yeah. Absolutely adored it. That's a great list. We've got some good similarities there and some good differences as well. Yeah, we were, we were very similar. It was literally only like five to two with different parts of everything.